Hey, all right, so I know it seems like I've really just been posting repair videos and stuff, but no, I've really been flying a lot more than I've actually been posting, so there's gonna be a lot of catch up. But today's uh, current date, we kind of broke the NASCO. Yeah, that ended up happening like a couple, like two weeks back or so. We were flying really well. The, the day was going by really well. Last pack of the day. And the Nazgold's like ESC just like decided to give up and kablu itself. So this is what happens when you plug in a battery. So I got the Nazgold here. It's kind of all you know dead and everything. But if we plug in a battery, which I magically just got in my hand somehow, we plug in battery. Normally you hear startup beeps like the t t t or something like that. You would hear beeps when you plug in, but Unfortunately, we got nothing. So uh, that means the ESC is dead. Fortunately, I've taken the liberty of ordering a uh, ESC uh, to replace this one, but that's gonna involve a lot of work to repair this. So that's what today's video is about. We're gonna be repairing the Nazgold and hopefully making it fly again. Fingers crossed because we haven't been able to fly for the last, I don't know, two weeks? Yeah, it's a... One, it's been really rainy the whole week. It's been raining. Two, the Nazgold's heart ESC heart is down. All right, step one of the problem is to diagnose the problem. Here is the last ever flight, the last pack I've ever had with the Nazgold, and before it suffered its major flight or made its major downfall. So we're just gonna review the tapes and see what happened in the last. Here we go, we're going down, flying really low. This is a parking structure that I, I'm, this is like the supreme moment. This is the supreme location, we're gonna come back here. But this parking structure is really nice. So we do a nice flip into like a backwards kind of roll. And then yaw spin, it's way too fast for my view. Invert a yaw spin and as soon as I try to pull out, it just, like it, it just gave up. Like the motors wouldn't pull up, nothing. And essentially we came crashing to the ground and yeah, that's what happened. So here we're just like sitting aimlessly and it's just waiting for me to come and get it. It was it was basically all blown to pieces. When Once I reached to the location of where it crashed, it was basically blown to parts. There were the, the, like none of the ma none of the stuff like the board and everything was was out, but the the side covers, the top plate, the GoPro, the battery it was it, it was all ejected. So that was that. So knowing now what happened and my analysis of the thing is the ESC died. So that's what we're going to be replacing in the next step. So let's step two. So step two is unboxing the actual ESC that we ordered. So here we go, we got the so we got the Blitz uh, 45 4 and one ESC. This is a direct replacement to the part that we have on the drone right now. So luckily this came in. We're gonna go install it today. Alright, let's open this. So we got the container here with the specifications in the back. Uh, so we're, we have the Blitz E45S 4 and one ESC. So in the box we have a new XD60 cable which we drastically need because the one on the mask over right now is kind of smashed to pieces look it's kind of exposed wiring the the cable protector thing is out yeah not so good but uh we're gonna be oh, we're gonna be replacing this for sure because it came in the box so we got our xd60 connector and we got some more miscellaneous plugs uh, some of the stoppers, so like the vibration dampeners for the boards. And then we got the actual ESC. So here we go. This is a direct replacement to what we need. Uh, let's put this here. There you go. Okay, so step three is disassembly. So what I've done so far is already disassembled most of the drone. Uh, it's just the little matters of taking like precautions to secure the board making sure nothing sparks on or arcs onto it um, 
So what we're going to be doing is kind of just peeling apart. So taking out the cameras and putting it to the back so that we have some space to work. Um, later on, so this is kind of game plan, but what we're going to be doing is we're going to desolder all these motors, um, these motor wires off and putting it direct replacement in and soldering it back in and then plugging in. Hopefully, cross your fingers, it works this time. If it does, we're going to install the capacitor as well and um, prevent this from happening in the future. But with all, all hopes, it'll be back up in the sky and we'll be back to flying. And that's, that's, that's what we're going to do today. All right, let's move. Okay, so with the camera, we're going to need... All right, so uh, soldering irons kind of hot-ish. Uh, let's go to 370. We just have to pull off these wires and solder these wires from the board, and then we'll be free to work. All right, first things first. Let's uh, desolder the flight controller's five volt. Um, so we're just gonna like this. Heat it up. There you go. We're gonna take. We're gonna start desoldering each of these motor wires so we'll start with motor one okay motor one wire off two more to go there you go all right all three are off so whenever you're soldering uh, FPV components or any components for that matter, once you finish every single solder joint, check the board and if it's too hot, like hot to the touch or anything, let it cool down because you don't want the board to overheat and, you know, burn out too. So I'm just going to let it cool down for now. There we go, so all of these are off and disconnected. So now, all right, now we can take off this board and it's just like this. So basically this is what blown, um, I'm not sure what blew actually, like there's no sign of like any damage or anything, but all I know is it doesn't work anymore. So we're just gonna take it off and put on a new one. Okay, so step three or was it four? I think three. We're gonna get started on attaching the XT60 cable to this uh, new ESC. So to do that, we have to uh, put some flex on. So I got the flex here. I'm gonna put some of this on onto this, these two pads here, and then we'll be able to solder these two on uh, these, this XT60 on there. So we can find some power just like this. Um, that step, and then. Uh, we'll put in the gummies, like the, the dampeners in each hole here. So after we half assemble this ESC, then we'll be able to kind of put more flux on the other pads here and solder it to the motors. And hopefully at that time when we connect it with the battery, uh, granted we're going to have a, like a, a short stopper just in case so that nothing gets shorted. So we're gonna plug that and the shortage into this XC60 and it should beep all the motors. If it doesn't, then we have some more diagnosis and analysis to do. Okay, so solder. I mean some flux first. We'll get some flux on this brush. Put it on here. Now, let's heat up the iron. We'll go to let's say 400 because we're using thick solder this time so all right so it's hot enough let's get some solder on this thing all right let's let it cool down a little bit the board's getting 
kind of hot after that one first one because I'm kind of using high heat so we're going to let it cool down a little bit then get the other side done but that's pretty cool for the first solder that's pretty good I would say so myself and then later we just connect these two like this and put it in there and we should be good to go Now that we have the ESC kind of assembled, wow, it's really bright. Uh, it's the next morning if you're wondering, but now that we have the ESC kind of assembled, so we have all the stacks, uh, the gummies in, the rubber bases, as well as the uh, pre-soldered joints on top of each part, and the XT60 soldered in as well. Now we can drop it into the Nazgold and solder the motor wires together with it so that we can test if this ESC works. Okay, so now that we finished soldering, um, by God, I'm so not happy with these solder joints because look at these. They're like all pointy and stuff like that, but either way, it works. Now that we finished soldering, we're gonna plug a uh, 
shortage i'm not sure what they call it but anyways there's a fuse on here that prevents any like the electrical noise being spiked and essentially destroying all the components on this board it's handy for testing purposes when you're trying to determine does it work now does it not for this uh test just to make sure that it does function and make the motors um beep and like provide power to the motors we don't need to put on the flight controller yet we just need to make sure that there are sounds of life here so i got myself a battery here uh, which will be connected to this and this will be connected to the power plug right here so we're gonna do that now so cross your fingers that it works here because if not e yeah we're we're going back to the drawing board okay so let's do this side that and now for the grand finale. Hey, it worked! Woohoo! Woohoo! Yes, it did. It worked, it worked, it worked. Okay, unplug. Unplug this. Alright, cool. It's back. It's functional. So now I'm gonna go take a break. And when we come back, or rather for you, we'll be in a couple of seconds. We're gonna put this mess of wires and uh, camera back on. So this this is like the electrical circuit. The flight controller is this one. It's uh, and then there's the Beck, which is this, uh, because the flight the five volt regulator that's on here that controls the five volt currents uh, kind of died. So I need that to power um, this the RX, which is the controller antenna. And then we got the run cam Vista or run cam link, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to be putting this back on and then um, uh, assembling everything back together, the frame, the top plate, uh, all the, all that goodness. And then we're going to go outside and get a test flight in. If it works, it works. And we're back in the season, baby. Let's go.